What's going on, guys? It's Chad Ed Haig reporting for Southern India, and I'd like to continue our talk and lecture series on acceleration through dark data, mainly the works of Jack Lou, to the Abrahamic system that was uh, profoundly talked through the work of Gene Wolfe and the Book of the New Sun, which is a very long postmodern epic. This is actually something you will not learn in your average American educational school system. You know, spend fifty thousand dollars on a subpar professor teaching you everything. Thing when I, I learned my same lesson and gave them so much money. But here, here at the School of Forbidden Textbooks, you'll learn so much here that you will not learn in your average cookie cutter university. But back on the subject, that there is this kind of uh, tantric notions within the materialistic world, especially expressed through dark data. And I can let me explain that further. And the first thing before, if you have to understand anything about the dark data and tantric dialogues, is there is a concept called dream world. Uh, there is a man by name, I know Alex von Goldstein. He used to be in a band called Harpoon Forever in the Jersey area. Uh, at that time, I was really studying in Denver with the works of of Heidegger and things like that, so I didn't even have time for that. But there was also a Midnight Oil song by the name of Dream World, and there's two different Dream Worlds here. There's the one that uh, Von Goldstein talks about, the Dream World inside our heads, versus the Midnight Oil song of Dream World. It was kind of popular at the time, I thought it was interesting, but the songs like this actually give us insight that we as human beings have this kind of Abrahamic system that we project onto the materialistic world and yet we create spiritualism through that. And I think that is a very uh, fascinating notion, and many philosophers, whether that is from Derrida or the distortion through um, Michel Foucault, as these two figures, Derrida and Foucault, they might say something else about dream world being this kind of social justice warrior fantasy land. This isn't the case, as popular music has expressed uh, kind of an uh, in egalitarian notion and different hierarchies that have been expressed through the work of Heidegger and so on. But I think another uh, post-continental philosopher who talks about this is Nick Land and his work with cybernetics. So within the uh, pre dark Enlightenment writing, you know, he's been influenced in this kind of what you would call the quote-unquote accelerationist movement, the fatalist strategy of ecstasy in Jean Bougevard, where like a system is abolished only by pushing it into the hyperlogic, by forcing it into an excessive practice, which is equivalent to the brutal anonymization. And you have a lot of these writings coming about it and how that cap Capitalism is just a machine looking at us, that we have smartphones looking at each other. You know, it goes all back to Mark Fisher, a, a British cultural theorist and student of land, argued in 2011, 2011 that land's greatest impact so far has been on music and art rather than on philosophy. Even there's the, a musician called Code 9, the artist Jack Campit, and our students about how it's kind of very inhuman, uh, like Robertson Jeffers type of ordeal. And we're getting, we're getting a backbone into how uh, Dream World works. Dream World isn't so much like a term, uh, Terminator Skynet AI kind of ordeal, but something we can also dream about. And I think this is what the social justice warriors do not understand, that their, no, their actions are like a robot, and that this robot... It may look over us, but we can still dream and break the system. And I think this is something you also find in the spiritual world within uh, Talmudic Judaism. And this even goes all the way back to Oswald Spengler with his work about Decline of the West. But within Decline of the West, you have the decline of everything that may be Nick Land's inhumanism, going back to Robertson Jeffers, that this inhumanism is like making everything fall apart, that accelerationism wants everything destroyed. Uh, Spengler introduced his book as a, you know, co uh, sorry, overturning, unquote, a specific metaphor of societal collapse involving a rejection of the Eurocentric view of history, especially the division of history into the linear, ancient, medieval, modern rubric. Sounds kind of like what Xi Jinping is already doing in China with the Chinese Communist Party. You had many of those old school Marxists that thought communism would rule everything, but communism now literally has post-Russian existence in China, hence kind of this Asian Aryan ordeal of control, which I'll get to later in a bit. But this decline of everything, the accelerationist thing, is the decline of whiteness studies. And, you know, social justice warriors love talking about how much they hate whiteness. But here Schmengler is talking about the Babylonian, the Egyptian the Chinese, the Mesoamerican, and 
In this framework, the terms culture and civilization were given non-standard definitions, and cultures are described as having lifespans of about a thousand years of flourishing, a thousand years of decline. In the final stage of each culture, he uses the word civilization. And so, as all civilization falls, only the non-Eurocentric civilizations rise, mainly uh, India, who I have very much experience in, southern India, Mumbai, and in China, which is very popular with kind of the weedy types, like anime and video games. And so Skynet AI, it is a decline of everything, but what you have there is um, an anti-transhumanist county of India and China that always in this kind of beautiful golden age beyond like Muslim, Jew, and Christian ideology. So according to Spengler, the Western world was ending in the final season. The winter of Faustian civilization was being witnessed, which we could say right now was under the, the Joe Biden regime, and what we have to say with all the social justice warriors running around. In Spengler's detection, Western man was a proud, tragic figure because while he strives and creates, he secretly knows the actual goals will never be reached. And that makes me think about how maybe Nick Land, he's putting this hypothetical uh, theory fiction of science, legit science fiction onto us, but it can never really truly be actualized because so much is what we do not understand outside our Eurocentric interests. No, there's already been what you would call the problematic far-right uh, spiritual philosophy, especially the work of Julius Evola. And if you know something about the Oxford Asian Studies major of Nicholas Goodrick Clark, uh, Clark's PhD dissertations were the basis of the most celebrated roots, the occult roots of Nazism. And his book has been continually in print since in 85. And, but his other book I want to mention is Black Suns, uh, Aryan Colts, Esoteric Nazis, and the Politics of Identity. And this framework right here kind of understands uh, not just the material world that we're going through, but the spiritual. And this is what we're going to come back to with the uh, tantric notions, of the, the sexuality urges that queer identity can create uh, neo-Nazi subcultures and these neo-Nazi subcultures are in part a part of the Dick Hebdian a uh, subcultural urge to break down society. And Nick Lan is further like this. He wrote an article called Hyper Racism. Uh, but here that Gulich Kark is making sure that he was a founding member of the society, and this was kind of like an Asian studies society, which I very profoundly admire, but it here that he knows that there is something ultimately wrong. It is funny to assassinate even people like Jared Taylor, where uh, a Volnian terrorist, as he outrageously puts in the text, would be supporting Jared Taylor of the American Renaissance out of all people. And somehow, we're getting into the intersection between queer culture, and this is something with Judaism already predicted through the Abrahamic kind of Yassad in heaven, and Ablon at the bottom. And so we're at Ablon at the bottom, but we can never reach to Assad. And Yassad is that kind of spiritual realm that looks over us, like smartphones or Xi Jinping's China or what uh, Nick Flan or, or it's kind of the pulp Terminator movies called uh, Skynet AI. And this is exactly how social justice warriors police you. So now that we got into that, we have to think about what it means to be subculturally part of the social justice warrior. And that's why there's this concept of being gay, quote-unquote. I mean, what is gay? Uh, homosexuality is one thing. Uh, I could like another man, but is Platonism gay? Um, we have this book, A Passion Observed by Will Fellows, Gay Men as Keepers of Cultures. Uh, from large cities to rural communities, gay men have been passionate pioneers as keepers of culture, res res rescuing and restoring uh, decrepit buildings, revitalizing blight neighborhoods, saving artifacts, and documents of historical significance. And so A Passion Observed explores this authentic and complex dimension of gay men's lives by profiling early and contemporary preservations throughout the United States, highly in contributions to the larger culture culture that gays are expectationally inclined to make. And so I select this for my gay book club in order to go discussion. And there's another theory called homo nationalism. It's the idea that gay people build civilization. And Will Fellows kind of puts this out here. I know there's other white nationalist organizations run by uh, countercurrents owned by a repressed homosexual named Dr. Greg Johnson, which his work is very interesting about Kantian ethics and whatnot. But I uh, hear being gay is something immaterial, it is not solely uh, spiritual. And I think that by understanding being gay and by destroying what it means to be gay, we can destroy the social justice mentality of going into Skynet AI. And this is ultimately 
in Judaism culture leads to an Aryan model of interest. Uh, you know, Judaism, Russia, and China are uh, know about the Aryan. And the thing is, the West, well, ever since the far-right government of Nazi Germany, has always been against the Aryan. We cannot now, um, we are now going into this kind of submission, consensual urge to be a part of Skynet AI. And this is something being practiced. But here's a little interesting paradox here. Here are two Aryan women in 2022. On the left, we have adult film actress Priya Ray, which is one of my favorites. And onto the right, we have Ray Blue. Both of them are Indian. And both of them do pornography. You know, uh, as a man who admires Indian culture and Indian woman, and my, my wife, by the way, is Indian, I kind of understand the beauty of these two Aryans. Uh, there were many beautiful films with uh, Priya Ray in them, and she would just do exclusively white men. So it was kind of flirting with this ideal that the ideal uh, future white woman, quote-unquote, is not like a social justice feminist, but a beautiful, uh, huge-breast Indian woman, and that being in the Brahmin class ultimately means being a white chad and having, like, literally doing porn with this beautiful Indian film actress. Now, as I understand right now, that uh, Priya Ray has retired from the adult industry, and on the right we have Ray Blue, who is kind of young and doing this, and she has her uh, white boyfriend doing this all, and she's representing this new model of Aryanism with the white male Indian female complex, with I've been kind of seeing the subculture around here, my village of India, I am seeing now more white men with big breast, uh, big thigh Indian women that you would not see in developing countries like India. And so this interest in Indian sexuality, I would even call it Hindu sexuality, of Priya Ray and now Ray Blue manifesting those desires, we are thus becoming the Asian Aryan model to uh, destroy and to bunk kind of the mode to break out that materialistic world that's kind of getting us. You know, in a way, we are Aryans and we destroy and we're creating this Euroboros cycle. And so these two porn actresses, it's kind of like porn as Euroboros. And this is kind of a concept that gay writer Dennis Cooper writes in Closer and as Closer is described as physically beautiful and strangely passive, George Miles, the fictional character in the book, his fellow students, with a, he tracks with a mysterious promise, like a wallet lying in the street. On after another, his teenage friends rifle through George, ransack him for love or anything else they could trust, his mind fest, and he's just in middle America. Uh, what they find is a vision of nightmare intensity in a novel that insults the senses as it engages the mind. Uh, closer follows the links of desire and the value in the Rene Girard aspect that drag George into the arms of men like John, an artist who draws his portraits of humanity in order to find what lies beneath, kind of like this Yukio Mishima complex of being a repressed homosexual. Remember, Mishima is quote-unquote gay. He is not being gay, but now he is quote-unquote being gay, as something Heidegger would notice, that being gay is not the same of becoming gay. Um, Alex fascinated by splatter films and pornography, and his friend Steve, an underground entrepreneur, turns his parents' garage into a nightclub. These and other pass George hand-to-hand, -hand, hoping to even feel one motion clear and uncorrupt by society. Here they are eating each other over and over again like an Uroboros. The Aryan, he may have his uh, beautiful uh, Indian-American porn actress girlfriend, but here he is destroying the world through his queerness. And this is actually a problem. This is the tantric dialogue. That tantric is kind of an Uroboros that eats the material world to create this spiritual world. That you're no longer becoming quote-unquote gay, but you're becoming quote Unquote, being, and that being is beyond being gay. And a brutally flanked prose that explodes the euphemism, cliche, and evasion, Dennis Cooper stares unflinchingly at the horror of a society without values, and his vision makes it normally all too real. It is a world in which pain is unviable reality, an income companion of truth, and tests to commit life. So Cooper explores the limits of experience, and while he shapens our understanding of life around us, he has no escape of what he finds. And so constantly, the porn as Euroboros theme is one of the main things of understanding dream world. And I think these, this preference here of these part one and part two can really understand that dream world is something you make up. We do not know if his friends are really starting a nightclub in a garage. For all that matter, it could be a part of dream world. How uh, Jack Louie and technology is making us create these smartphones realities and the Gerard notion of emulation and that emulation becomes homosexuality. And I think this leads into something called the Alcibiades complex. And if you know something between Plato and Alcibiades, Alcibiades was going out there doing manly things 
things and is kind of repulsive against social justice modern society. And Plato, as much as we can say nice about Plato, Plato was like the first egalitarian that wanted this kind of Skynet AI. Little did Alcibiades knew is that Alcibiades was having a tantric dialogue. He was literally having sex with women in the street and Plato was getting mad. Plato was like, you shouldn't be having sex with women. You should be going out and supporting the trans spiritual way. And so Alcibiades is the first to be gay. You know, being of gay, not exactly subcultural gay as a social justice-minded person would say, but becoming gay is a part of that. And so the forms of existential nihilism, corny life without intrinsic value, meaning our on purpose, the moral nihilism or the metaphorical nihilism. So it isn't the liberal nihilism where social justice warriors tear down and break down. The Alcibiades complex is a natural tantric dialogue. And that here, you are accelerating through the dark data which persists online. Pornography is dark data. Uh, some of my work at the School of Forbidden Text is dark data. And this dark data you consume in gives you more of understanding that it is better than what, you know, a college you're spending $50,000 in continental philosophy would ever teach you. And this is what the Marxists and communists do not understand, that it isn't so much that you must uh, read the works of Marx and Lenin in order to overthrow capitalism, that we become agents into being into here. And this is something already produced predicted in Judaism. So the only answer is to become an Asian Aryan. And I think the next lecture I will do will talk about the nature of being an Asian Aryan and how you accelerate through dark data. But if you enjoyed this lecture, I recommend my book, Being in Oil, Volume 1 of Peak Oil Philosophy and the Ontology of Limitation by me, Chad Ed Haig. And by the way, I have a Patreon link at the bottom, so I highly recommend to join the School of Forbidden Text. There's so much out there that your normal school will not teach you at all.